The COVID-19 pandemic laid bare long-standing disparities in our healthcare system, with the most vulnerable in our society suffering disproportionately. We promised people for many years in ethics and within healthcare that we were going to make sure that they were cared for well and that people would have access and we would do the good things for them that we do for everybody. That didn't happen for, for many, many people. This disturbing pandemic reality served as a call to action for the Center for Practical Bioethics, an organization dedicated to bringing bioethics to the bedside to benefit patients, families, and caregivers. The same inequities that we experienced before the pandemic were only magnified during the pandemic. COVID has drastically changed the landscape of healthcare and healthcare ethics. And what we found is that we have to change along with it. The center has long focused its attention on elevating the voices of those who are not heard or heeded. But the pandemic helped crystallize the urgent need to redouble those efforts and look at the center's work as a means of seeking equity and justice in the healthcare system. Ethics is not this thing that we can just sit around and think about. It's a way of actually putting our values into practice. The Center's legacy work in end-of-life issues exemplifies this. Its initiatives in advanced care planning enable patients to have a voice in their care and treatment even when they can no longer speak for themselves. A key part of those efforts, outreach to diverse communities with an emphasis on addressing long-standing barriers to quality care. Bioethics doesn't just flow from the mind of the philosopher or the ethicist. It's really a community-based project. We have to work together to build a more equitable, ethical system. Responding to the needs of clinicians and providing them with ethics information and resources to ensure they're equipped to deal with real-world situations is a cornerstone of the center's work. What we do is ensuring that those ideas of justice that we are striving to achieve are supported at the individual patient level. Ethics education for practitioners is a key piece of the puzzle. Partnering with healthcare organizations to grow their ethics competencies through ethics committees and ethics consultation services is another. We try to empower medical providers through our programming by helping them understand the ethical dimensions and the justice dimensions of their practice. This work is incredibly important in all aspects. It shapes patient experiences into a better experience in the hospital and it shapes the moral distress of our providers so that they can feel like they can do their jobs better. These days, technology complicates the picture. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is poised to reshape the healthcare landscape, presenting both opportunities and risks for clinicians and patients. It's not just you and your doctor, it's now it's you and your doctor and this big, sophisticated suite of softwares. AI encompasses technologies that involve complex computing and pattern recognition in data sets. In healthcare, it means using information to create new capacities, from diagnostics to resource allocation to care delivery. The Center's Ethical AI Project fosters responsible ways of developing, implementing, and using these tools in healthcare settings. We bring the ethical piece into AI and healthcare because we're really standing on the framework of ethics that already exists in healthcare. And so that's really important to this initiative and also in defining how we talk about ethical AI in the future. The objective? Addressing risks, especially inequities, before they become endemic. To that end, the center is bringing together key stakeholders in tech and healthcare to problem solve creating educational content to address ethical concerns in systemic ways, and developing process improvements that identify and resolve problems. You have to have a lot of these systems in place before something goes wrong or your response is likely to be inadequate. We want everyone to feel like there's a course that can be taken when a tool that we've developed starts producing results that make us uncomfortable for ethical reasons. While the Center's focus on raising and responding to issues in healthcare is critical, that's just part of its mission. It's not that healthcare doesn't matter, but healthcare is really the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. We need to think together as communities, as a nation, about how we can help more people stay healthy. That's the core of the Center's work in population health, a discipline that studies health at a group level looking at population groups based on factors like geography, education, socioeconomic status, and race, among others, enhances our understanding of overall health 
and differences in health among various populations. The goal? To find customized policy prescriptions to address long-standing problems. Blackshire's research is laying the groundwork for engagement and action through democratic deliberation, a process geared to bringing together people from all different walks of life, providing them with nonpartisan educational materials, and creating a forum that enables participants to learn together, discuss issues in a respectful manner, and find common ground. There are a lot of Americans who are weary of the fighting, the gridlock, the vitriol. I think there are a lot of Americans who would appreciate the opportunity to learn and talk together about serious problems. In the initial phase of this multi-year undertaking, Blackshire and a team of experts are creating a toolkit that will provide a model, resource materials, and metrics for a pilot project in Kansas and Missouri. If successful, it could serve as a template for similar efforts nationwide. Preliminary conversations will focus on population health challenges and opportunities. In the second phase, communities could tackle specific issues like maternal mortality. Poor health outcomes affect all Americans, but have a disproportionate impact on people of color and poor people of all races. Bringing diverse voices into the conversation could serve as a path to solving seemingly intractable problems. We need to learn from them so their voices can be heard and can inform policies, priorities, and important decisions that affect their life. The ultimate goal of all of these efforts spearheaded by the center? Improving the quality of health care and ensuring better outcomes for everyone. Justice and equity has to come from within and be part of who we are and the work that we do as health professionals, as people, in creating community, in creating change, creating better outcomes, improving quality. That's what the center's work is, and that's absolutely essential to achieving our mission and creating a better world.